true. So we're so thankful to be here today and to see one another. So we have some announcements here uh, that we want to make. Um, Bob Collins is Thursday. Um, so we want to make sure to for the ladies to keep that in mind. We always have a great time. The worship committee is going to meet Sunday, August 20th, following morning worship. So if you have uh, ideas or concerns, let Valerie Lavery, the chairperson, know. Um, then we're going to be collecting school supplies for elementary schools in Cherokee, North Carolina, to be delivered to them at the end of August. Please bring your donations to the church by August 27th. And I think from what I heard, this is something that y'all have done before. Uh, and the gentleman that had, uh, was doing that had uh, become ill and wasn't able to do it. So uh, he's, he's back on track now and wanting to do this. So I think that would be a great, great opportunity for us to be able to do that. Um, uh, our communion rail offering today uh, is to jumpstart our fuel mission. So that's a very important mission also. So we want to be able to get that done. Um, we have several announcements regarding the, is it the ice cream? Yeah. So, uh -huh. Which will be August 26th out of the pavilion. Um, we have some sign up sheets in both, by both doors for our ice cream desserts and a few other items that are needed. Uh, so if you would mind signing up for something. We have some flyers. Uh, if you want to get a beautiful uh -huh. job on them. Sure. We will be having a representative from .go, which is a uh, health screening service that, that Dollar General is supporting. So they will be here. They will be representatives here to answer questions about what is available for free and upgrade crimes for people in the community. So please invite friends and relatives, especially even if there's anybody that might need information about the health screenings. Just let them know. Yeah. All right. So we're looking forward to that. So make sure you sign up and everything for that. Um, the flowers on the altar today are provided by Dilly Cone in memory of her late husband, Ed, whose birthday was August 10th. Um, and we have no birthdays or anniversaries. That's unusual. So, uh, all righty. Then if, oh, okay, Barbara. Yes, um, I just wanted to say that we've changed up the pop-up just a little bit, and then we'll be putting the food out after church, so if everybody's in the kitchen, we will
749, Psalm 17, verses 1 through 7 and 15.
Einstein's affirmation of faith, it is the Nicene Creed. Please join with me together. We believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten by the Father, God for God, light for light, true God for true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things remain, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified in the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in the one and the holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. his gray belt. Oh, that's right. You got the gray belt, too. Yeah. We're so proud of you. I have a prayer concern. Um, with school starting, Kenwood is eight special education teachers short. So that leaves four of us to do the job of 12. So if we could pray for the four of us, we've got a lot of our plates right now and we're all maxed out to the limit. So I'm sure. Oh my goodness. Okay. So they, they got openings for four. Eight. Special. Eight. Eight. 
Yeah. On special I think they were um, like do on the job training if you're if you didn't have your for general ed yes okay. but not for special ed. <laughs> general ed if you if you have a bachelor's they'll put you in a classroom. Um, for special ed you have to be certified. Oh, okay. So yeah, so we've got over 220 kids with four teachers. Oh my! Okay. Wow. Okay, Tandy. I probably don't need to make any announcements. Mm -hmm. yes. I love the children's message. I'm going to pray a special prayer with the teachers and the uh, all young people who are going to school from college to um, down to preschool. Uh, but I'll do that after the children's message. Uh, so let us go to the Lord now in prayer. Lord, we come to you this morning so thankful to you. You have been so good to us, Lord, in the midst of turmoil and darkness lord you are still with us <coughs> that's what we're so thankful for you no wonder your name is emmanuel because you're with us through everything that we go through and we're so thankful to you we praise you because you are worthy of all praise and worship and honor and glory dear lord we we thank you because you just have done exceedingly and uh, abundantly above all we can ask imagine or think think we thank you, dear Lord, for um, bringing us together as a church family uh, to worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you, Lord, for uh, blessing our own families, dear Lord, and we just ask that uh, peace would be in the midst of each one of them. Dear Lord, we ask uh, in the name of Jesus that uh, as a church family, you would show us uh, where to go and what you want us to be doing, dear Lord, as we strive to serve you in spirit and truth and in unity, dear Lord. We're so thankful for our church family, dear Lord. We're thankful for our own families. We just thank you, dear Lord, for the for the family of, of, of humanity, dear Lord. And we ask that you would look out on this world and bless each person as you see they stand in need of blessing. And then, dear Lord, we ask you to please heal all those who are sick, all those who are having a, a test done and who are waiting for results. We just, we just ask, dear Lord, that you would allow the results to turn out good. And, dear Lord, we just ask that you would be with them as they're struggling through their illnesses. And then, dear Lord, we ask you to comfort those who need your comfort, who need your peace, dear Lord, that 
peace that passes all understanding and guards our hearts and minds in you. And so uh, we ask you to give us that peace and joy, dear Lord, joy unspeakable and full of glory. Our happiness can be taken away, but our joy in you, dear Lord, can never depart from us. We thank you. And so, Lord, we just uh, ask this morning as we uh, get ready to um, um, commune with you and with one another, uh, that you would just search us, dear Lord, search us and point out to us the things that we each need to change about ourselves, dear Lord. Uh, help us to be able to see ourselves as you see us. And dear Lord, ask you to ask, I ask you to help us to see others the way that you see them, dear Lord. So we just thank you and we praise you and you're just so good to us. Dear Lord, we ask that you would just uh, counsel all of the plots and plans and devices that the enemy comes against us with. Dear Lord, you're able to, you've given us power over all the power of the enemy. And so help us to choose, dear Lord, to do what is right in your sight. Help us to be strong and to be courageous, dear Lord, so that we can stand up for what is right and so that we can do those things that will glorify you. We want you to be glorified, dear Lord, because it's not really about us. It's all about you. And so as we worship, enter into our hearts, dear Lord, so that we may be able to, you, to worship you in a manner in which you are worthy to be worshipped. And then, Lord, there are just so many different things that we have to contend with, dear Lord. So many different things that cause us to sometimes even question you and who you are. Dear Lord, please push those doubts from our, our mind. Help us to know that we can ask you questions, dear Lord, that you don't mind being questioned and that you are the only one who really has the answers. And so uh, we just thank you for that. Carry us through, dear Lord. Dear Lord, I ask that you would, um, those things that we keep hidden, in our hearts that we can't express out loud to anyone. I just ask, dear Lord, that um, you would hear those things and that you would receive those things. And so now, that's what we want to do. We're going to lift those things up to you that we cannot express out loud, but we know that you're going to hear and you're going to answer. Lord, and we know that you will answer. Help us to be able to give it all over to you and to know that you will answer in the way that is best for us. So we love you, we trust you, dear Lord, and we thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now we're going to have our young people come. Our children's message by Miss Tammy. Jacob, and he spent an entire night wrestling with an angel of God. 
And after an entire night of wrestling, God's angel told Jacob to walk away. Jacob left the wrestling match with a new name and a limp from his hurt hip. We sometimes struggle with God too. We may want to do things our way instead of his way. When it's hard for you to obey God, is sometimes it hard to obey God? Yeah. Maybe we're not as nice to somebody as we could be or we don't listen maybe as much as we should. I think I see a couple wrestling faces going on right there. <laughs> So, today's lesson, we're going to learn something about that. William, could you take this and hold it? Could you take one and hold it? Can you get one? Can you get one? So just hold on to it for a second. So, you're each going to get that, and then we're going to do something else. You're going to get that paper towel, and you're in charge. You're in charge of the paper towel, and you're going to be in charge of something else, too. Maybe if I can open this. Maybe not. There we go. Okay. So, I had to wrestle with that. All right? <laughs> so, you guys are going to each get an ice cube. And then you're going to have a choice on how you're going to melt it the fastest. Do you want to hold it in your hand? Do you want to put it on your paper towel and put salt on it? Put salt on it. You want, okay. So, William, I'm going to let you take an ice cube. And put, let, set it down on your paper towel. Here, you get an ice cube. And set it down on your paper towel. Get an ice cube. And there's the salt line. You get one. Oh, okay. There you go. You know where'd your paper towel go, sweetie? I'm going to do it with my Okay, there you go. And then I'm going to get a paper towel. So. We're each going to have an opportunity to see how we can melt it the fastest. I think Mila's on to something. Mila put hers in her mouth. 98.6 degrees. Yeah. Okay, there you go. It's coming out now. Okay, so each of you decide. Do you want to hold it in your hand or do you want salt? Salt? Okay, so William's going to put the, pass the salt around. Okay. And then I get a special tool. What do you think this is? A blow dryer. So, what do you think is going to melt the fastest? Definitely yours. It's, it's, it's oh, dripping already. It is dripping already. You like to hand the salt over? You pass the salt over? There you go. Good job. Pass it down. That this is first. Good job, so sticky. So I know. Well, yours is melting pretty quick. Look at that, William. Yeah, you like lots of salt. You do. Yeah, lots more. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. I think I need a paper towel too. Did you know what that is? What is that? You think it's hot on my hand? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's see. That's a lot of hot air coming out of this, isn't it? to yours. Do you think mine's melted more than yeah. yours? Oh! Yeah? Definitely, huh? See the difference? Go, yeah. Okay. What do you think? Is that mine quicker? So, sometimes what we have, oh, Mila brought me hers. Thank you, Mimi. So, what we have to remember is that when we listen to God's will and we're always one of a wrestler for God, He's going to give us the resources and the tools that we need to always do what? Be good. To be good? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And he's going to, when we surrender to God's will and we do what God asks us, then we're always going to be right. Can you guys say a prayer with me? Dear God. Dear God. Please help us remember. Please help us remember. That you are the one who knows 
But you are the one who knows what is best for us. What is best for us. We can surrender to your will. We can surrender to your will. And trust you. And trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, guys. Can you, can you? All right. What do you want? Now, I would like for I, any, uh, any like, teacher, like, any uh, one who's going to be in school to uh, please come up here. And we're all having a prayer together. Dear Lord, those standing around this circle are either going to be in school or they're going to be teachers in school. And dear Lord, we are praying right now that you would bless them, that you would just uh, let them uh, learn and teach in safety, dear Lord, that you would encamp your angels round about them, dear Lord, to protect them, that you're going to build a hedge of protection around them, dear Lord, as they are going about doing what uh, you would have them to do. You you want us to learn more and more, dear Lord, not, not just about you, but also uh, about this world that we live in. So school is exciting and we learn new things. And for those who are teaching, dear Lord, who don't have enough resources, don't have enough help, dear Lord, who uh, struggle every day to find a way to help their their students to understand, dear Lord, the lessons that they are being taught. We ask you to give them wisdom and to give them knowledge, to give them patience, dear Lord, and to give them every tool that they will need to be successful in what you call them to do, because teachers have a calling also, dear Lord. And so we know that you're gonna be with them as they walk in that calling. We know that you're gonna be with our young people as they study and they learn and they grow. So protect them from bullying, protect them, dear Lord, from uh, uh, not having what they need to be able to be successful in school. Protect them, dear Lord, against all of the assaults the enemy may try to uh, bring against them and help them to be excited about school and about learning, dear Lord. We thank you for them, teachers and students, dear Lord, and we ask you to bless them in every way as they go through this year and help them along the way, dear Lord, and let them know that they they have a pastor and church family who loves them and is here for them, whatever it is that they may need. So we just thank you, Lord, and we praise you for them. In Jesus' name, amen.
Church of Giving God, we, as always, thank you for all the blessings you give to us, and we return but a very small portion of those blessings back to you. May they further your kingdom on earth. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Oh, defender 
hear how the widows You're so mighty, you're my king And that's why I sing to you I will sing to you, my God And extol your holy name I will sing to you, my God Oh, Lord Jesus, you're my king I will sing to you, my God Cause I know I might mess up every day But you love me anyway So the couriers went from city to city to the country of Ephraim and Manasseh and as far as Zebulun, but they laughed them to scorn and mocked them. Only a few from Asher, Manasseh, and Zebulun humbled themselves and came to Jerusalem. The hand of God was also on Judah to give them one heart to do what the king and the officials commanded by the word of the Lord. Our second scripture reading today is from the New Testament, the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verses 29 through 32, and that's found on page 183 in the Pew Bible. Let no evil talk come out of your mouth, but only what is good for building up, as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God for which you are marked with the seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving to one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you. We have come 
come to another moment where we can hear from you. We ask, dear Lord, that you would just set our hearts, our minds, and our spirits on fire with your word and just with the awesomeness of who you are. Dear Lord, we know your word never returns to you void. It always accomplishes what you sent it for. So we are believing today that salvation, restoration, reconciliation, all kinds of wonderful things are going to happen, dear Lord, not because of Rose and what she says, but because of who you are, dear Lord, and your word. So we thank you and we praise you. And I ask that the words in my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts will be acceptable in your sight. For you truly are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. We're going to talk about today, does it help or does it hinder? Does it help or does it hinder? So we are, a, we live in a diverse world. Diversity is all around us. And sometimes when we think about diversity, we only think about ethnic diversity or racial diversity. But there's spiritual diversity and there is uh, diversity within the church. There's personality diversity, dear. And, and so uh, the good Lord uh, has made a world that is diverse and it turns and um, the seasons come and the seasons go. But within all of that diversity, there's also unity. And I had a, a and, and, and I guess uh, Bobby can correct me on this. I don't know if it was my history teacher, uh, I'm not my history teacher, my chemistry teacher or my biology teacher that talked about that the world has, uh, that there is diversity and unity and that uh, life has to have both to exist. Life cannot exist in a vacuum where there's only one and not the other that there has to be diversity, but also that diversity has to be unified for life to exist. And so God created such diversity. Just look out at the different seasons. Look at us who are gathered here today. We all look differently and we all think differently and we all talk differently and that's fine because otherwise it'd be pretty boring. If everybody was in here was like me, it'd be a pretty boring place. And so I'm glad that God has given us all of this diversity. But within that diversity, we also have to be unified. And so Paul, in his letter to the Ephesian church, um, is trying to teach them some ways of Christian living. So if you ever really want to know uh, what the scripture says about Christian living, uh, go and read the whole book of Ephesians because uh, in this letter, Paul gives us some uh, specifics about what we're supposed to do and how we are supposed to get along and how we're supposed to use the wonderful, marvelous gifts that he has given to us. And so from the particular uh, passage of scripture uh, that was read uh, in that fourth chapter, beginning with verse 29, it, it tells us about some of the things that we should not do. And this basically has to do with the way that we communicate with one another. He says, don't let any, my version says, unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. Uh, only what is helpful for building and building others up according to their needs. And so whatever we say should be said in a spirit of uh, building one another up. That's why we've been given spiritual gifts. You know, spiritual gifts are to build up the whole church. That's why one person cannot have all of the spiritual gifts or they would be the church by themselves. That'd be no fun. And so we all have been given these different gifts, these different personalities, these different ways of communicating with one another. And we are to use what we've been given to build up one another. And so we should always be asking the question, is this, is this gonna, is this gonna be helpful to this person or is it gonna hinder them? 
Is it going to cause their spirit to uh, breathe? Is it going to bring them down? Is it going to make them sad? Now, am I asking you to lie to one another? No, I'm not. <laughs> but speak the truth in love and kindness. Because, you know, really, that's what God does to us. You know, God really does not come down upon us with uh, all this big judgment telling us, you know, Rose, you just have not done right, and I'm just sick and tired of you, and you just need to sit down somewhere, and no, he'll tell me what's wrong, what I need to improve, but he does it in love, because he wants me to be better. So I want us all to be better uh, as uh, children of God, as representatives of Jesus Christ. Uh, we want to make sure that we are giving out benefits and that we're not hindering people. Because when we do that, not only are we hindering people, but Paul in this letter to the Ephesians says, you know what else you're doing? You're grieving the Holy Spirit of God. Because in each one of us who is a believer in Christ, the Holy Spirit dwells within us. He doesn't come and go. Now, there are some times when we feel like our gas tank is filled up to here and we can go, go, go. Uh, and then sometimes we get lazy about praying and reading scripture, even the pastor does it. And you find like, you know, you're, you're, you're going and you're going, but your tank is getting emptier and emptier. And so the Holy Spirit hadn't gone anywhere, but the effects that he is allowed to have on us is diminished because we're not doing those things that are going to keep us encouraged and energized. And so uh, we have to do those things that are going to uh, not uh, breathe the Holy Spirit in others nor in us. Because when we hurt one another, when we backbite and again, go back and read I want you to read all of Ephesians, but especially uh, go back and read the, the fourth, all of the fourth chapter, because he, he really talks about those things that we need to do to build one another up. So, you know, we're, we're, we're grieving the Holy Spirit in ourselves when we are hurting others. Because this is the thing about a family. Families love one another. Families stick together. <laughs> Families sometimes disagree with one another, but uh, I know my oldest sister, and I, I had a brother. Um, my oldest sister and uh, the, my brother was in between my old, older two sisters. They would fight like cats and dogs. Now, by the time I came along, they, they were grown, going, going to college. And so they would fight. But don't let somebody outside of the family say something about them or do something to one or the other. Especially don't let anybody do something to the sister and the brother find out about it, then it was on. And so families are that way with one another. So even in the Christian family, that's the way we are with nobody else outside of these walls. It better do anything to any one of us. But we find ourselves sometimes disagreeing and, and, and saying the, if the wrong thing to one another in here. But if we depend upon the Holy Spirit within us, we will know how to communicate, how to talk with one another. And I know just about everybody in here except the little ones are old enough to know this, that you can't have your way all the time. Everybody cannot have their way at one time. It's not going to happen. I haven't seen it happen yet in the church. And so you have to learn to compromise. You have to learn to want what is best for the other person. So the person made you mad. The person said something to you you didn't like. Okay, it hurts. It does. And we acknowledge those feelings. But we don't turn around and think Jim said it in Sunday school this morning. You know, and my mother used to say this all the time. 
You don't do evil for evil, because it only makes you more evil. And so what we do is we respond in love. And we always do what is best. You know, parents do what is best for their children. I wanted my children always to be independent. I, I wanted them to grow up to become independent people. Yeah, do I want them to still need me? Yes, but not in an obsessive kind of way. I want them to uh, know mama's there for me, but I also want them to be able to go out and be independent on their own. I want them to love everybody. My ex-husband and I uh, couldn't get along as husband and wife. It just was not gonna happen. So he found himself with someone else. But, and we had three children, and the baby had just been born. But I taught them, and he taught them, you love your father. You love your mother. I'm not gonna stand by and watch them mistreat their father because I met their father. And he's the same way. He will not let them mistreat me because he may be mad at me. That's the way the church has to be. You know, we have to want what is best for one another. We have to work hard at it because it doesn't come naturally to us. What does come naturally to us is to bicker and to want people to choose sides and to uh, do all of those things that cause disunity instead of unity. Our nature, unfortunately, when we allow just the human nature to do what it wants to do, is that, yeah, we kind of want to hinder a little bit. But as Christians who are filled with the Holy Spirit, we cannot do that. And that's what Paul tells us. That is not the way to go. Because when we do, we grieve the Holy Spirit. And without the Holy Spirit, we can't do anything that we need to do as Christians. We can't love the way that God wants us to love without the power of the Holy Spirit. We cannot go out and do acts of mercy by ourselves. It takes the power of the Holy Spirit working in us. We cannot uh, go out and, and we cannot pray and we cannot uh, understand scripture. We cannot do any of these things without the power of the Holy Spirit working in us. And it's there for us to avail ourselves of. See, the Holy Spirit is, um, I guess you could call him a gentleman. He's not going to force himself on anyone, but when we call upon him, when our heart's desire is to do what is right and what's good, oh, he will well up in us like a fountain. That's what Jesus was talking about when he was talking about this living water. It will spring <laughs> up like a fountain and it will overflow. So we should always be <coughs> overflowing with good things. Are we going to mess up sometimes? Are we going to make mistakes along the way? We certainly are. But when we do, we're quick to catch it. David, who is my Old Testament hero, I know I've told y'all that before. What I really love about David is when he sins, now this is not what I like about him. <laughs> when he sins, he sins big. But what I really like about him is that when he repents, oh boy, you cannot beat him in repentance. He's quick to repent. He's quick to recognize what God is telling him that he has done wrong. And he's quick to want to get back into God's graces to be able to experience that close relationship that he has with God. And that's what I want for us. I want us to be a force in this community where we are just so loving toward one another where we are so filled with the Holy Spirit that just our presence in, in, on your job, in your job, in your job, or in your home, or in Walmart, or in Publix, wherever <laughs> we may be, that the Spirit is so welled up in us and pouring out of us that other people will take notice. And they'll want to say, hey, there's something different about those people at Bethlehem. 
Let's go and find out what it is. And it's not so that they would just come and occupy pews in the church, but it's so that they will pursue a relationship with the Christ that we serve, the Christ who died for us, the Christ who loves us with an everlasting love. And so Paul says, get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, brawling, slander, along with every form, along with every form, along with every form of malice, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ forgave you. When I was younger, I had been mad at this girl, just, just mad, just feel, well, I might as well be honest and admit that, um, I was just filled with hatred. I was a teenager, just filled with hatred for this girl. And she didn't she didn't care for me either. <laughs> and the thing of it is, somebody uh, who's one of my teachers uh, who said to me, you know, can't you forgive her? And I'm like, no, I really can't. And she said, you know, you've got a nerve. And I said, what? You've got a nerve. Christ forgave you. And you have the nerve to withhold forgiveness from someone else. And I think Jesus, if I'm not mistaken, tells a parable about this. Someone who owed some money, and it was next to nothing, but the person he owed the money to had the power to have him thrown into prison for a long time. But he gave him for what he owed. So this person is free, and he goes out, and no, I, I've got it backwards. He owed a lot, a whole lot to this person, and uh, could have been thrown into prison for a long time, but that person forgave him. So then there's this other guy who owes him a very, very little. And he wants to call the magistrates and have this man thrown into prison to have him beaten. And so there's always somebody watching, right? So the people around went back and told the one who held uh, his original uh, loan or whatever it was and told them about it. Uh, and so he was going to make sure that the guy was uh, uh, had to go ahead and pay back that loan because he could not have the same compassion on this person for a little amount that he that the person that he owed a large amount to had. And so sometimes if we're not careful, we can be like that. Because like me, uh, and by that time I was uh, uh, an older teenager, but I was a, a Christian. And so I knew about forgiveness, had been taught about forgiveness, but I just refused to do it. And then when uh, my teacher said, you know, you have some nerve, God has forgiven you for your sins, and yet you're withholding forgiveness for other, from others. And so that's what God, I'm sure, thinks when we don't forgive one another. And, and oh yeah, oh yeah, you, you remember that thing that, well, we're going to say it uh, today, but, but remember that thing that uh, is uh, called the Lord's Prayer? It's really a model prayer. Uh, the Lord's Prayer is actually in the latter part of John when Jesus is in the garden praying. That's really the Lord's Prayer. But what we pray, the model prayer today, the Our Father. Remember that prayer where, remember that part where we say, forgive us as we forgive others. And to go back and look at the Greek in that, I don't know if it's the Greek or the Aramaic, but it, it means Lord, you forgive me to the same iota, did it be, to the same narrow, to the same iota that I forgive others. So we're harboring things in our heart that shouldn't be, and we pray that prayer, you best leave that part out of it because you're telling God the same way I don't forgive other people, don't forgive me either. So let's think about that. 
while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, for the ungodly. So if Christ can die for us while we were yet sinners, we do not have the right to withhold forgiveness, compassion, and love from anyone else. And so what I want for us and what my prayer is for us all the time is that whatever situation we find ourselves in, we will remember that we belong to Christ and that Christ has expectations of us to live in a way that is going to glorify him and glorify the Father. And that we have been given the power of the Holy Spirit to accomplish it. So we can't wring our hands and say, oh, I don't know. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to go. I don't know how to do that. I can't do that. I can't ask that person for forgiveness. I, I can't forgive that person in my heart. We can't. We, there's no excuse because we have the power of the Holy Spirit working in us. God has not asked us to do anything that we cannot do. And he has not just asked. But he has commanded us to love one another. Jesus said, they'll know that you're my disciples when you love one another. So it's not the good works that we do. It's not the, the um, uh, things that we go out into uh, the world and say, well, hey, we're, we're Bethlehem Church. And it's, it's not those things. It is the love that we have for one another that will cause others to want to come to Christ. So it's on us. We can be loving and kind and do things that are helpful, or we can be stubborn and we can hinder. We hinder the progress of the church. We can hinder our own progress, our own spiritual journey. And I know no one in here wants to do that. So we're going to be loving toward one another. We're going to speak the truth in love. Issues will come up because we're humans. That's okay. But we will work them out in love and fellowship. Or there's no need to come here. Because that's what this teaches us. It teaches us about love, unity, grace. Mercy, <coughs> when I come to the communion table, uh, and and um, the pastor at saying though, hey, what's his? Yeah, yeah, he he preached a, a great sermon about holy communion, and, and I'm I'm going I try not to do other people's things, but I, I I'm going think I'm gonna have to preach that. Uh, it's just a beautiful example of what Christ does for us and why we even do this. It's more than a memorial. It is more than uh, just something that we do to commemorate. Uh, it is something that we actually receive from God. We bring ourselves in our sinful state, in our um, undisciplined way, in our, with all of our cares and our concerns, but when we kneel down there at the altar and we receive the body and the blood of Christ, we're given tremendous, tremendous grace in that moment. We're able to feel that God is with us. Emmanuel, God is with us. They dwell together in unity. I think the psalmist said, uh, I'm happy. Um, they who dwell together in unity are able to accomplish things. Just one more thing, and then we will, we will serve communion. In the Old Testament scripture that was read, there were people who were basically told by the Lord the same thing that Paul tells the Ephesians. Some of them accepted it, some of them did not. But the ones who accepted it said that, um, that they, they were unified and that God blessed them in their unity 
And that unity that they had spread to other places where people were maybe being a little more stubborn and didn't want to receive uh, what it was, but that unity that they had was really very strong and it was like a movement that went forward and that God blessed that. And that's what I want for us. I want God to bless us in that. Do you know why God stopped them from uh, building the Tower of Babel? Because they, they, were, they were on it. They were, now I know in our scientific minds, we know about science now. And so we can have some doubts about the story. And we can say, well, you know, they couldn't have gone too much further. They would have run out of oxygen. But those people, the point of the story is this. That they were so unified. Remember at that point, they only had one language. They were so unified that the Father, the Son, that's another place where we find the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit both, uh, are all three talking, and they're like, if they keep going, you know, they're 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 gonna they're gonna reach their goal. We gotta stop them. It was because they were unified. Think of the things that we can do if we were unified, not just as a church, but if the world could be unified. It doesn't mean that we would all think alike, but it does mean that we would be, you know, on one course and, and going forward. And so that's the importance of that story. Uh, and so God mixed their languages up where they couldn't communicate to, with one another. Because if you don't know how to communicate, then there's going to be misunderstandings. If you don't, uh, you know, see things in the same way and are able to express that, that's what causes issues. And so that's what happens to us sometimes is that, yeah, our inability to communicate, our inability to recognize our diversity, who has a soft tone, who has a harsh one, who doesn't, uh, who uh, looks one way and who looks another, uh, who looks like there's somebody you could talk to? Who looks like somebody I don't think I want to talk to? And the, none of those things are bad. They're just different. And we receive them different. So maybe I need to bring somebody in, maybe, to help us learn to communicate better uh, with one another. But at any rate, that'll be at a later time. And we do have to get to Holy Communion. But I just want you to know, we, we, we are called to help, not hinder. We're called to build up, not tear down. We're called to love and not hate. We're called to be unified and not divided. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit who are unified with one another. Amen. Amen. Now let us prepare our hearts and minds to receive Holy Communion. <coughs> this table is the Lord's table. Doesn't belong to Bethlehem. Well, somebody from Bethlehem, I'm sure, probably won't make it. But it's not our table. It is not the United Methodist table. It is the Lord's table. And all who are willing to receive Him are welcome to the table. <coughs> Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. 
We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us from joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Here In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. The Lord is God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks to Christ. It is right. And a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, you formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord. God of God and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from the slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, he gave thank, he gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you. And said to his disciples, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood and of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it to re in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of the faith. Christ is died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us, gathered here, and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, one with each other, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in great victory, final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And we will pray the Lord's Prayer when we finish. Some, yeah, some, some days, some days, okay. Let's <laughs> pray the Lord's prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. But that is the kingdom and the glory. 
always calls me right. <laughs>
Thank you. 